Kremlin propagandist Yulia Vityazayeva angered Russian Z bloggers with a statement about the Ukrainian armed forces operation in the Kursk region, in which she effectively accused dictator Vladimir Putin of surrendering Russian territory. Vityazayeva called the advancement of the Ukrainian army in Kursk region a cunning and effective plan of the Russian Defense Ministry and General Staff, as well as Putin personally, in her Telegram channel. These words by Vitya Zayeva caused a storm of indignation among Z bloggers who accused her of discrediting the Russian army and Putin. You understand, this is pure discrediting of the army and the president, that Putin personally surrendered Russian territory for the sake of some cunning plan, wrote Z blogger Roman Sapankov. Vitya Zayeva's statement also angered one of the main mouthpieces of pro-Kremlin propaganda, Vladimir Solovyov. Z blogger Yuri Podolyak claims that after this post, Vitya Zayeva was fired from the program Solovyov Live. According to him, Vitya Zayeva threw into the information space an idea that should undermine trust in the government and Putin himself, and also cause a real wave of indignation. Earlier, Vitya Zayeva spoke openly about the revival of Hitler's ideology in Russia. She noted that chauvinistic and anti-Semitic sentiments were growing in the ranks of the Russian far right. An example of this is the creation of the so-called Russian community, which declares its goal to fight for the purity of the Russian nation against migrants. All these calls, so the state doesn't protect us. Well, let's unite into some communities. Listen, guys, in our country, the monopoly on violence belongs exclusively to law enforcement agencies. What communities? Are you crazy or what? What's next? Will there be pogroms and then another civil war? Where are you pushing people? What are you thinking and what are you doing? It's just scary. I'm not afraid of Ukraine or NATO. I'm afraid of what's happening here. What is being hammered into people's heads and what they're provoking and what all this will ultimately lead to? Because Russophobia, anti-Semitism and everyday chauvinism ultimately lead to one thing, to dividing people into classes, the appearance of concentration camps and gas ovens. Vitya Zayeva said she threatens to set Russian security forces on those bloggers who incite hatred against migrants as well as representatives of non-Russian peoples of the Russian Federation. Very many of those who have saddled themselves with these agendas can only be stopped by an invitation from Comrade Major. Many have realized that this topic can be used to hype things up. And when there is nothing to talk about, talk about the topic of migrants. You will get applause, a minute of glory and an armful of flowers, the propagandist said. The question posed to Vladimir Putin in September about the U.S. election drew a wry smile and an arched eyebrow from the Russian president. Asked whether he preferred Donald Trump or Kamala Harris, Putin caught listeners up short with his teasing reply that also included a gentle jab at President Joe Biden. Our favorite, if you can call it that, was the current president, Mr. Biden, he told the audience at an economic forum in the Far East port of Vladivostok. But he was removed from the race, and he recommended all his supporters to support Ms. Harris. Well, we will do so, we will support her, he said sardonically, citing her expressive and infectious laugh that shows she's doing well. The election Tuesday carries significant stakes for the Kremlin, and despite Putin's noncommittal and somewhat teasing answer, it appeared to encapsulate Russia's view as a choice between two unappealing possibilities. Harris, the current vice president, has taken a hard line against Russia, while Trump, the former president, is known for his admiration of Putin. Still, at the September gathering, Putin complained that when Trump was in office, there were so many restrictions and sanctions against Russia like no other president has ever introduced before him. Harris is seen as likely to continue the Biden administration's massive military and economic support for Ukraine as the conflict stretches toward a third year. That would be unwelcome to the Kremlin, not something they want at all, said Nigel Gould Davies of the International Institute for Strategic Studies in London and a former British ambassador to Belarus. He believes that the Kremlin leadership would favor Trump's victory. The very fact that he is at the very least signaling that an American policy that he controls would incline towards Russia against Ukraine is fundamentally in Russia's interest, he said.
Trump has bragged that his rapport with Putin and respect from Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky are so strong that he could negotiate an end to the war in 24 hours. He declines to detail his strategy, but recent remarks criticizing sanctions in general suggest he could lift those against Russia as an inducement to help settle the conflict. Harris has not specified how her position would differ from Biden's. The U.S. has provided Ukraine more than $59.5 billion in weapons and assistance since the conflict started in 2022. She has said previously it would be foolish to risk global alliances the U.S. has established and decried Putin's brutality. Russian state media coverage of the election suggests the Kremlin prefers Trump, but Moscow residents seem divided in their preferences. One Muscovite on Thursday said that for Russia it does not make much difference who becomes president in the United States. Что касается фаворитов, то не нам это определять. Это все-таки выбор американского народа. И, ну я же говорил, у нас, значит, фаворитом, если можно сказать, был действующий президент господин Байден. Вот он его сняли из гонки, но он рекомендовал всем своим, значит, сторонникам поддержать госпожу Харрис. Ну вот и мы тоже так сделаем, будем ее поддерживать. Это во-первых, а во-вторых, она... Развещали, значит, надо, да? Вот. А во-вторых, она так выразительно и заразительно смеется, что, что это говорит о том, что у нее все хорошо. In terms of the, the underlying sort of thrust of policy to resist Russia's aggression, and to meet that by continuing to uh, provide resources to Ukraine, uh, she has signaled there'll be more of the same. That would be unwelcome to the Kremlin, not something they'd want at all. Trump, he's a lot of столько количества всяких ограничений и санкций в отношении э, России, сколько для него ни один президент раньше не вводил. А если у госпожи Харрис все хорошо, э, то, может быть, она воздержится от таких действий подобного рода. Trump has said, of course, in typical hyperbolic fashion, that he would end the war within a day. Uh, I don't think anyone believes that he could do that, and he certainly hasn't given any indication how. But the very fact that he is, uh, at the very least, signaling that an uh, American policy uh, that he controls would incline towards Russia and against Ukraine is fundamentally in uh, Russia's interest. So I judge very clearly that they would favor in the Kremlin a Trump victory.